when we're not feeling well and we take a medication that we think fits our symptoms without consulting a doctor, we're taking a risk. These risks are infinitely higher when the diagnosis is cancer and the very same life-saving drugs you're prescribed could really do harm. Joining me in the studio today is Professor Avi Schroeder from the Technion Israel Institute of Technology to tell us about a new innovation that might solve these issues. Thanks so much for coming in. Hi, Natasha. Thanks so much for having me here today. So let's begin. Tell us about this new innovation that you guys are offering. So it actually started as a problem, a problem we noticed in the clinic. Many patients that have cancer come to their physicians and they're diagnosed with cancer and then a medicine needs to be prescribed for these patients. And it's actually a really hard task to try and define which medicine will be best for each uh, cancer patient. In fact, when we look at the statistics, nearly 30% or even higher of patients are prescribed a wrong medication, a medicine that doesn't work. So what have you guys created to combat this issue? So our approach was to use nanotechnology to try and pre-screen ahead of time before treatment actually begins, which medicine will be best for each patient. Wow. Now, what types of cancers have you diagnosed with this system? What types of illnesses? Yeah, so the, the first cancer we went for is called triple negative breast cancer. It's a subset of breast cancer or a subtype of breast cancer, uh, which 20% of breast cancer patients actually suffer of. And there, the clinical uh, uh, tools are actually more limited. There are less medicines for treating triple negative breast cancer. And that's why we thought that's a great place to begin, where the clinic needs very much a technology that can help determine or personalize cancer care. Now, tell us how you guys actually do this. I mean, what is some of the data? How accurate is, is the system that you've created? So what we created is, uh, the analogy would be an allergy test. In an allergy test, we inject minuscule amounts of different allergens right. underneath the skin and then try to figure out what we're sensitive to. Here what we did is we used minuscule amounts of anti-cancer medicines. We loaded them into nanoparticles and then had them uh, injected into the, into the blood and target the tumor site. Inside the tumor, these nanoparticles actually reach the different cells of the tumor and dispatch their medicines. And our technology kicks in here. We can actually identify which medicine worked inside the patient's cells and which did not work. But we're using very, very low doses, meaning it's not a treatment, it's actually a diagnostic. So the way that it works is, okay, you go to the doctor, you're diagnosed with this specific type of cancer, and then you do these tests to be able to to identify what medicine would work best for the patient? Absolutely. Okay. When, when we look at the data, many times uh, a physician will treat with a medicine they were sure or not sure would work for this specific patient. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Right. What we want to provide the physicians with is information before they start treating. This medicine works best in your patient, but running it as a very, very safe trial before uh, beginning treatment. Now, you said that you work specifically with patients of uh, this breast cancer, but are there other cancers that your system can apply to? So that's, that's wonderful. We're, we're starting with breast cancer. We okay. surely want to expand to additional types of cancer, such as ovarian cancer, melanoma, and other types of cancer where we believe our technology can really help advance the way uh, the clinic actually treats our patients. So it seems like you're on the right path. Now, what do you do if, hypothetically, the system misdiagnoses or overprescribes something? So that's, that's a wonderful question. The worst we can go is give the medicine that the patient we, we'd think to give without the trial. So we're not giving medicines or not testing medicines which would not be used in this, uh, in this uh, type of cancer. We're screening within the set of medicines that are used today, which would be best. So worst we can do is be at the state of the art today. And the best we can do is actually improve way beyond the state of the art by tuning the medicine or tailoring the treatment directly for this uh, specific patient. So now the big question is, when and where will this uh, you know, technology be available to patients in need? Natasha, thanks so much for asking that. And uh, the technology, the platform is actually, we have it. 
It's in the lab. It's ready. What we need to do now is transform it to the clinic. And this is where we need help also from the regulatory bodies who understand that this technology actually is a transformation of the way we treat cancer today, but also from the, phys from the, from the patients themselves. Today, m uh, most governments actually listen very closely to what the patients say. And when patients demand that a technology come faster, reach the clinic in a faster manner, all the bureaucracy that's around it, which is important bureaucracy, but actually can move much, much faster. We've seen it in the past, and I believe also here we need to work hand in hand with the patients, with the caregivers, and with the regulatory bodies, so this technology, which is important, we believe, will reach the clinic in the fastest manner. Well, I guess we just have to hope for the best. And, uh, you know, it seems like you guys have created something that has the potential to, to save millions of lives. Uh, so we'll, we'll just see when it's available and hope that that time is soon, right? We hope so, too. We're right. doing our best. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks so much for having me, Natasha.